Okay, thank you very much um, for coming this afternoon. Um, my name is Dr. Connie Blomgren, and I'm here with my colleagues from Athabasca University, uh, Dr. Stella George and Dr. Karen Cook. And we have actually two other guests joining us, but they're still on the transit. Um, one is a high school student. So she's on her way with, uh, uh, her name's Miriam, and Agnes, uh, who works with Sincunia, um, which is a nonprofit here in Edmonton, is uh, you know responsible for making sure she gets here and they're gonna participate when they arrive. So if we're interrupted part way, that's partly why, so. Our presentation today is called Celebrating Youth, Intergenerational and Intercultural OER Animation uh, Co-Creators. Uh, we have a land acknowledgement and Athabasca University, which is Canada's online and open university, welcomes a diversity of learners from all over Canada. We celebrate and acknowledge indigenous heritage, including the ancestral lands on which our buildings are located today in Athabasca on Treaty 6 and 8, the traditional territory of the Cree and the Métis. This area is a meeting ground and home for many Indigenous peoples. We respectfully acknowledge that we live and work on the traditional lands of the Indigenous peoples of the country known as Canada, and we honour the ancestry, heritage and gifts of Indigenous peoples and give thanks to them. So, because Athabasca is online and distributed across Canada, our land acknowledgement is you know, quite wide and inclusive in many ways. Um, the photograph on the right is the beautiful Athabasca River in the April of 2020. <laughs> Nobody was there except for me. <laughs> Anyways, it's very beautiful and uh, you know, water is life. So um, i just give you a little bit of background about how we came to be doing this project and when it began. So um, back in July 2021, um, hot off the <laughs> pandemic, the tri-agencies came together, all three came together to um, invest in promoting vaccine confidence across um, Canada. And um, the federal call um, funded uh, 40 projects all around communication and vaccine confidence. Um, the projects were one year in duration. And as you can tell, timelines sometimes move, given that we're in 2023 now. <laughs> um, but the, um, the artifact that we created has been available for um, about a year now, so, um, you know, it's nice just to finish things off. So our finished product is an animation and it's called um, Accelerated Confidence in Canadian Teens Health Decision-Making decision About Vaccination. So um, we had um, uh, uh, some clear aims when we started the project and um, they were to look at the complexity of addressing complex health decision-making, including vaccination. And it was particularly focused on um, uh, youth high school students, young adults who are gonna be the next decision-makers for how their families are vaccinated. And uh, we did not focus on COVID. In fact, we left that out so that it was a, not a territory that would be difficult for uh, youth with parents and whatnot. Uh, if there was a disagreement around that. But we did look at all the other kind of uh, vaccinations. So um, our aim was to provide youth-focused health information and um, to actually have a very uh, super creative co-creation process uh, to create this OER in that we co-created uh, with the youth for whom this material is um, directed at. And um, along with that is, was the opportunity to develop health information and science literacy along with longev longevity. So with a little help from the amazing tech panel at the back, if we could click on the hyperlink 
and uh, no, it's up at the top in the title where it says, it, yeah, there it is. That's just a screenshot. There we go. Hi, I'm Corey. Thanks for joining me. This is my family. My mom and her parents, they're here a lot. My stepdad, really a nice guy, an ICU nurse. Kai, my stepbrother, a real sports dude, super tall with abs. And our sister, Michelle, mentioned her having a baby. My younger brother, Clay, who loves beating me at gaming and hates school. And my goldfish guru, Goldie. I want to have a career as a social influencer and Goldie is my number one fan. And then, of course, there's my imagination. So vivid, it's almost real. Corey is thinking a lot about viruses these days, and their imagination has a lot to offer, but more about that later. Kai walked into Corey's room one day, all excited about a trip to Guatemala. Corey couldn't believe how lucky he was, until... Oh, God. Corey realizes that vaccinations are needed to help prevent diseases that would send Kai running to the bathroom, or worse, the hospital. Dinner! Hey Kai, that's a lot of shots. Dinner! Corey's slightly envious of Kai's Guatemala trip, but not so much about the vaccinations. <laughs> Keep calm, Corey. Goldie Guru has something to tell you. Happy that Kai is only two shots away from protection, Corey realizes that this is news worth sharing. Getting vaccinated for travel might not be so painful. The viruses are big talkers with egos to match. The longer people wait for a shot, the easier it is for viruses to be passed around. What we know and believe today can change tomorrow because science is iterative. Scientists experiment, evaluate results, and make or update discoveries. They do this over and over again to determine the best medicines and practices. Corey is searching for reliable information. Yeah. Test science information for yourself. Follow the five and five. One, read like a scientist. Two, look for a consensus. Three, find original sources. Four, use specialized sources. And five, evaluate the author's expertise. With cries of, oh wow, you are here. The K family excitedly welcomes Michelle, Mitch, and the baby bump to the barbecue. Corey's discovered a lot about viruses and vaccines based on their 5 and 5 research. 
Vaccines protect us and others by making the virus more difficult to transmit from person to person. One person, close friends, makes a safer community for most people. Corey is wondering what happens if you aren't most people. Researcher Corey is back again. Corey's already followed the five and five. There's no fake news here. Cognitive biases influence our understanding of information. Clay is looking for evidence needles hurt. And Kai's optimistic. He's just thinking about the present and not about being sick in Guatemala. A jab in the arm is not that bad. And Michelle, she was unsure about giving up what she already believed when it conflicted with new information from her dad. Michelle decided to check with her own doctor about what is right for her. She's not getting sucked into authority bias. The other important part about making tough decisions, Corey found, is how to separate your emotions from facts. Corey has done a lot of excellent research. Corey is thinking about posting their research. In a brief moment of sibling support, Kai explains to Corey that their posts are really helpful to him and others at school. It takes time to build a following and it's effort and reliable information that matters most. Hi, I'm Corey. Welcome to my channel. All right, Agnes has arrived and so has Miriam. Welcome, come on up and join us on the stage here in the bright lights. <laughs> Hi, Miriam, so nice to meet you in person. We've only met online. Nice to see you. Hello, Agnes, again, Nice to meet you in person, because we only meet online. <laughs> so we're just partway through our presentation. We just want, I, you probably didn't get to see it on the big screen. Maybe, you know, we're the last presentation, and I'm the problem child of the tech people over there, and I'm just going to ask them to play it one more time before, like, what, it'll just be us in here. Nobody else has to watch it, but it'd be nice to see it on the big screen and hear it through the lovely speakers and just really take it in, eh? So, okay. Um, 
Stella, why don't you pass the microphone to them? They give their official names, like their full names, because I'm, I can't remember now all of it. And then you can jump back in. Okay. Oh, um, hello everyone. My name is Miriam Bengura. Nice to meet you. Hello, my name is Agnes Somwa. Thank you for having us. And we'll hear a little bit from Miriam and Agnes um, later on. But we hope you enjoyed the video. It's uh, twice as long as it's supposed to be <laughs> because there was so much good stuff created by um, the youth around the story that it was really difficult to cut down. So we already cut it in half once, but just to let you know. So even though we wanted this to be um, a co-creation with the, with the youth, we wanted to set it with a structure such that there was the freedom to create, but with a direction and with a purpose the whole time. And so um, what we did was we had one of our librarians at Athabasca University, Jordan, work with us to generate some good reference material around vaccinations and scientific facts and myths and so on. And then we spent a little bit of time at the beginning um, getting understanding of each other's experiences of, of vaccination and health decision making and telling stories in, in the way um, that Darian explained this morning as being a, a good sort of circle of sharing. And once we had done that and we had the shared understanding of what each of us could bring from experiences, we went into a second stage where we did some experimentation around what we wanted the video to be like, what message we really wanted in there, what communication styles we wanted. And what we didn't know at the time um, and what we allowed was the communication around that story to evolve and to, we didn't know how important the characters would be in terms of setting up the scene, setting up some of the narrative. And so um, once we had worked through the characters and we had uh, workshopped um, for several weeks running, we workshopped how we would do that. We co-create narrative and then we started to fix it all together. And once we'd got a script, then we handed it over to the production crew who professionally created to the specification that the whole team had given them. So down to gender, down to um, languaging, the type of vocabulary we use, the type of movement, how much dialogue there was, how much cartoon, the pacing, the music. So these were all decisions that the group made. Okay, so that's how we started. Now, some of the youth, because there's quite a few involved and they weren't able to join us today. So we'll be hearing video clips from these four youth who are part of Agnes's group and she can speak a little bit more about each one of them when it's her opportunity. And then we also have um, Frank McCallum, who is a vice, president, uh, vice principal at Vista Virtual School and his students also were involved in uh, the co-creation process. So um, again, if we can just, it's embedded right in, so thank you. Hi there, my name is Frank McCallum. I'm the associate principal for Vista Virtual School. Uh, I'm sorry I couldn't be there in person, but unfortunately uh, the way the school year has begun has kind of kept me a little busy. Uh, in terms of our involvement with this project, uh, we are an online school, and so clearly we have an interest in uh, um, getting access to online resources, being able to actually construct those resources in a way that fits our particular curricular needs is very helpful. So in that sense, we were already motivated to uh, participate in this activity. But the other part of this was the ability to have students collaborate with each other and between different schools. And that was a very big draw for us. We are always looking at ways to improve relationships with students and how to build those bridges between students and between students and staff. And so that was one of our interests in pursuing this project. And it was certainly an eye opener in a lot of ways. And we've applied a lot of those learnings in what we have continued doing as a school. 
since this project took place, we have since um, established a couple of clubs and we took some of the things that we learned in terms of process from this project and applied it to those clubs. Uh, some of this stuff is not surprising, but to see it in action is always valuable. First and foremost, whenever you get teenagers in the room, there's always going to be a certain amount of reticence to really be forthcoming with opinions and views. That's understandable in any circumstance. But in a virtual circumstance where they may have never met the students face to face before and they don't have the advantage of the subtle um, cues, physical cues that we get when we're in a room meeting with other people, uh, that becomes doubly difficult. And so we notice, at least in this particular case, it took time for students to be more willing to share their honest views. Um, again, probably not surprising, but very valuable to see that in action. And so with that in mind, we took that forward in terms of how we would build activities to get students talking and collaborating within our various club groups. So in, in a lot of ways, this activity is not just a matter of uh, building a resource, which is obviously important. It's, a, it's a, a struggle and perseverance to get the students to be interacting more openly with each other. And so I think that was one of the biggest takeaways from us as a school, and I think that's what I appreciate um, having uh, out of this particular project. The, the resource itself has been very valuable. We're able to use it across a couple of different courses because of its applicability both to um, social settings like in career and life management, as well as science settings like biology. But um, the development of the resource, absolutely valuable. The actual process of having students collaborate with each other, that has been more informative as to how we build relationships with our students. So uh, I wanna just thank uh, all the team that was involved in this project and uh, I hope you get a lot out of this session. Okay, you're going to have to hit ex escape, Reese. Reese, sorry. Okay, so here we are on um, some of the youth, and they, um, they're shorter clips, but they're very interesting to hear, too. Hello, you're here too. <laughs> okay, while we're waiting for the the sound to come back, do you want to just in, yeah, introduce Hi, yourself? My name is Obaya, okay. and I was one of the Vaccine Confidence Project participants. How did developing a video about vaccine confidence expand my knowledge or change my decisions about vaccines? Creating this project increased my knowledge of the various types of vaccines available for diseases such as hepatitis A and B flu, and many others. Before the study, I didn't believe we needed to get all the injections we needed to protect ourselves against infectious spreads by other people. The only vaccine I was familiar with was the COVID va vaccine because we had several news channels and social media platforms teaching us about the risks and benefits of getting the shots. The reason I, the, this research improved my understanding of vaccine since I previously did not believe vaccines were necessary. But now, I have a better understanding of vaccines and which vaccine to take to protect myself and my family from diseases. From my experience on this project, what do I recommend for adults who want to include high school students in learning projects? I think incorporating high school students or even junior high school students into learning a project about vaccines or any other project can be very informative and valuable experience for the students themselves as they will learn a lot from this information and any other information to be better equipped with knowledge. Thank you. So the most memorable thing to me about the approach of making 
interesting education material is that you have to know your target because if you know your target and the age that they are in you will be able to know how to introduce the information to them in a way that is entertaining. While developing the video, um, it helped me be more confident about taking the vaccine um, because I learned about the amount of research behind it and um, it debunked the rumors that it was a government attempt to turn us into robots. <laughs> Uh, while making the video, uh, I think it was really important that we had a lot of diversity in age and also in culture because it helped um, us input different ideas into the video and I think that's what makes the video really amazing. Uh, I would recommend to adults um, when they're trying to engage high school students to create resources like the video that we did. Um, is to allow them as much freedom as possible uh, but al always with the limit of course but to give them the freedom to bring their ideas um, and not like shut it down right away but find a way for those ideas to work together just like the question before i would recommend that they um, allow like freedom of different ideas no matter how odd it sound and freedom of like diverse ideas. I would also recommend that they allow the teens to, th to think outside of the box. I think what would help students get the most out of the video is to be open-minded to learn as well as to pay attention obviously because the, the video has lots of information and um, having attention will allow them to get the most out of the video. At the beginning of the project, I kind of felt um, I was uncertain and I was unsure about how it would look in the end because we didn't have the animators at first, but in the end it all turned out well. Okay. <laughs> okay, thank you. Oh, here is Miriam. Okay. The question that was asked was what would you recommend to adults about engaging high school youth in creating learning resources like the video? So I would, the question that was asked was what would you recommend to adults about engaging high school youth in creating learning resources like the video? So I would recommend adults to learn our language and like by that I mean like our vocab, like the words we use like on a daily. So for example, like if I were to text, um, I don't know, I wouldn't text, I, I don't know, like fully type it out, I would like text IDK. Cause it's like, it's just the way we communicate, you know? And for like most um, videos that I've seen, like examples, like there's Netflix movies that are supposed to represent us teenagers and how we communicate and it just it just it's just like a bunch of it just um sounds and looks like a bunch of like adults just wrote it from their own perspective of how they think we talk and how they think we think but if they were to get like teenagers give their input on that it would be a different type of content so i think um Getting like um, high school students engaged in animations like this would be very effective if you were if your audience was like of youth. And also the other question that was asked was, um, how do you think animations can be used effective and effectively in schools? Um, I think they can be like used effectively if it's like. Because animations are, you know, they have a lot of visuals and a lot of us are visual learners and we learn by viewing things and looking at things. For example, like I, 
like the way I learn, like I need to see it to be able to learn. So animations can be used effectively in schools to help visual learners and they can learn from that. And our last one. Mm -hmm. It's going round and round. It's going to kick in. Hey, my name is Ray. I'm one of the members behind the production and the creation of the Vaccine Confidence Youth. And today, I'm here to talk about my experiences with the Vaccine Confidence Youth through the use of two questions, but then before I get straight into it, I'd like to thank the vaccine committee for giving me the opportunity to talk about my experiences and to contribute heavily. Thank you very much. All right, so my first question is, how did developing, how, how did developing a video about vaccine confidence expand or change your decisions about vaccines? Honestly, I believe that I grew up in an environment where everyone believed that that um, prevention is better than cure. So after having gone through this experience, I believe that it only strengthened my belief in what I already, you know, kind of was brought up with. It only made it made my belief stronger that vaccines are the way to go, especially if you're trying to like avoid a certain type of disease or virus. Yeah, vaccines are the way to go. My second question is, what did you learn about working together to create a unique learning resource like our video? So working together as a team brings more ideas, support, and collaboration, leading to better problem, better problem solving skills. Also, I believe that when you work together as a team, you can always, you can leverage each other's strengths and skills and it fosters creativity and it boosts morale and it also enhances communication plus working as a team is generally just more fun thank you very much take care <laughs> oh. okay let me close the back oh okay pardon me there we are okay agnes it's your turn here thank you Thank you. My name is Agnes, and I work with a nonprofit organization here in Edmonton called Synconia. So when the creation of this project came from my professor, Connie was my professor when I was doing my master's with Atabasca, I, I consulted with the parents of some of the youth who were not over 18. And I want to talk about trust here from the parent. Most of the families that we work with are new immigrants, very new. And so sometimes they need to have somebody in their life that they can trust. And Synchronia is in that place where they can come, they can share their stories, they can request for services and support from us. And through that, we are able to work with them, especially with the children and youth, to integrate into the Canadian culture. So when this project came, there were some concerns that we needed to leverage, and I had to be the, the guarantor for the parents, for them to understand that, okay, this project is not going to... Because sometimes they are afraid of what, what are some of the questions they are going to ask my kid, and I am not there. So they, they entrusted their children into our hands, and were able to get four of our youth to participate in this project. And the youth themselves call me Miss Agnes. I am the one who scream, but they still trust me that when I say, let's go, let's join Zoom, let's do this, they are able to. Even right now, I'm still chasing them because some of them are still coming. <laughs> yeah, and so when, 
when we discussed how are we going to get them to participate, I think there were a lot of things, and I threw up to them, the youth, what they would like to do to be able to participate well. And they themselves su suggested ways of breaking the ice. I remember for the few three, first three sessions that we did, I asked each of them to be the moderator for Kahoot. They would set their own questions, research questions around COVID, around vaccine, around other diseases, and use it to set Kahoot questions where they can participate in. And they were able to do it well. I am really pa uh, passionate about where this video is going to be and the, the, the participants, as you see us here, we are all new immigrants and like two of them, Mariam came in 2019, July, Raymond came in 2021. So they have been very new in Canada. And our focus as an organization is to integrate them smoothly into the Canadian way of doing things. Even knowing my personal space, most of these kids didn't understand when they came here. And so to get them to collaborate in a project like this is very big for us as an organization and we don't take it for granted. Thank you. So, as you can hear, the uh, youth from Sincunia and the youth from Vista Virtual School um, had embraced this project after a while, it, and it did take a while to build that level of trust and confidence in the process and as well as in the product. But although both groups came from different backgrounds, the shared process and the shared purpose was actually really helpful. And as well as co-creating the product, the youth co-created their process of what we did. So we very much followed the lead and tried di out different ways of engaging, working as a big group, working as small groups, working individually, working asynchronously. We tried all sorts of things to build um, that trust that Agnes talked about. So um, the other thing I think that, that was different about this project is we had an intention of open access right from the very start. So with us, with the youth who came and be involved with us, but also with the production company. So there was no sense that what we were creating belonged to any one person or would be the possession of any one organization. It was a truly collaborative project. And so starting with that intent was really helpful in that we were all in this together type approach in, in doing this. Um, and so the other final point I want to make about this is, although we focused on creating a video as the product for this um, project, what the video does in terms of curriculum is it allows, um, it allows a story that has been developed by the youth through uh, our would-be social media creator, Kai, who was voiced by Miriam. And, and that's her first voice acting job, I believe. Yeah. But she's, I, I think she may be available for other opportunities. Um, and what it does is a video like that allows it to be based within curriculum in, in several different places. And so you can use an open educational resource like this in a number of different places and then use it as a springboard to attach other curriculum in depth around it. And so when we create um, something like this, it's an anchor for where you can weave it into other situations and other braiding. So. Okay, Karen, I think you might have a few more. Uh, yeah, I'm just gonna spend a couple of minutes um, 
uh, putting a bit more wrapping paper on the importance of the youth contribution to this, and particularly around the health information, because uh, you can imagine the youth met uh, three, us three women that look like this, and they eventually met some animators, and we were inviting them in to do something um, that they weren't familiar with, and uh, some of us had more familiarity with it um, other. But what I, from my heart, I just want to say, these youth brought to us so many things that we could never have done um, by ourselves. You've heard them all speak uh, about their roles in it, but the way it's, I think, um, provided more credibility to the health information that you see and that it, the animation and the, the chatter between the viruses and all the language and the way that they, they coached us uh, about that. And they coached us about, okay, um, you know, Kai's a, a tall guy with great abs and he's going to you know, wear high top shoes and he's going to be this and Corey's going to you know, be this and the music. And so the authenticity to me really comes through, and I think the youth have said that they um, uh, feel like it's authentic because their voice is there, which is, which is the most important part of it. And you saw as we went through the video, there was two key learning uh, pieces, and it was the five-on-five five information where you think like a researcher and gather different um, evidence and corroborate the evidence and things like that. But it was all done um, um, just a more lighthearted way. Uh, than you might find it otherwise. And um, again, a decision matrix, which I thought was an important part there, where the, the, um, the Dr. Kathy Fitch, uh, who's a ER physician in Edmonton, um, helped people think about how you separate emotions from facts and pros and cons and what those um, outcomes are on it. So um, in every piece of this animation, it was the health information was um, accelerated and made more credible by the youth. Okay, we can bring up one more chair because I see we have one more that arrived. Yeah, come on. You want to come? Okay, all right. Okay. All right, so we've got, um, I just want to just, again, thank the youth for all their um, great contributions. And, you know, it's lovely to see them come and be part of the panel here. They were a little nervous, I think, to come, but they're, they're here. And that's why we had the videos. We weren't too sure how many would be able to come. Um, the animation has been translated into French. Um, we really do believe that the animation and that whole process translates or interprets and bridges um, intergenerational understanding of these topics, but it also builds on, on the ideas of open pedagogy and the values of openness. And in, it's in that effort of building trust and those um, deliberately committed to trust building that you can co-create together. Anyways, of course, we could say lots more, but we're going to hear from Miriam and Obaya, and um, we'll pass the microphone down. Um, okay. Okay, it's just like I could say it. Okay, so um, since like this is like my first um, voice acting gig, <laughs> I guess, um, it, like, I'm like the person that like, I used to like not like the way I sounded, I don't know, because every time I would talk and like record it, it sounded different. So I was like, I don't sound like that, you know? So I was never like really confident in my voice. And this um, really gave me like, um, that like confidence boost. And like, it made me, uh, like feel comfortable in my own self and like I felt comfortable like speaking cause um, when like at first it was just, we were just doing it, we were just like practicing and then they told me they wanted me to like um, be the voice of Corey and I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> I was like, I was like scared but then I did it and they were like, oh, this sounds good and I was like, okay. So it was really, it was a fun experience and um, I would, do it again, yeah. And just like that's good. That's, that's good. Hi. 
<laughs> I'm Amma, and I definitely wasn't late. Um, <laughs> it was a fun experience. I was not the voice actor. I wish I was. Um, but I really enjoyed just watching it come all together because when we first started, we didn't know what the animation was going to look like. So it was just like we were all imagining different ideas of what the character would look like. And then when it all came together, it was just beautiful. Yeah. Hi, my name is Obaya, and I enjoyed working with everyone, the youth and the animation and coach and everyone, yeah. <laughs> okay, well, as you can see, we're quite the crowd up here, but we're going to turn the microphone over to you if there's any questions, and we'd really love to, you know, hear your thoughts on the animation. It's always hard when you make something like this to kind of hear what viewers, you know, an audience, not us, who are very close to it, you know, what do they think and anything that you noticed, and we'd just be curious to hear anything. So I can run around with the microphone if anyone's got a question or a comment. Okay, Shauna. Oh, okay, okay. Oh, Agnes, oh yeah. Thank you. Um, I want to congratulate you guys on this work. It's really excellent. And actually, I'm a microbiologist, so I've actually worked on vaccines. So it's really cool to see this. And I think it's really powerful the way that your voices were, you know, and your input, because communication and science and how you communicate it is so important. And when you all spoke in your video, you said that very clearly, and so did Raymond, about how key communication is when it comes to that kind of information. So congratulations and great job. But I have a question. I'm wondering how this is being distributed right now or where it's located and are, are other students able to see it? Oh, okay, thank you. Um, well, we're working on that, um, and we're going to do some research on the project as well, and I think in our overall thinking of where we can take it, it's currently housed on YouTube, but it's not um, distributed widely enough, although Frank, the principal, um, has access to it for, through um, Vista Virtual School. So we're still thinking about how to share out OER and have a greater uptake. And that's, to me, from my other projects, that's always the challenge, is trying to get people using what it is that you've created. Um, so we're going to brainstorm and do some more thinking about some of those things. So if you have some good ideas or connections, um, we are welcome to anything, any kind of suggestions. So, um, so we're still working on it. I guess it's the best answer to that question. Yeah. Any other questions? Hi, um, your, your animation was so lovely. I'm a middle school librarian, so I work with middle school students and I could even see them really enjoying um, the work that the high school students made because um, I think they would really understand it. And as a librarian, I love the part where you talk about the research components because I think not only are you providing information about vaccines, but also how you think about information, which I think is really helpful, and I could see it being used um, in a bunch of different different contexts. But I guess my question is, like, what was the writing process like for everyone? Like, kind of the creation of the of the script and the characters was that an easy process, or was it a hard process, or what was it like? You guys want to go first? Just yeah. something you want, yeah. 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 Um, so it was kind of like all over the place, you know, <laughs> and it was like a lot of trial and errors, you know, so, but at the end of the day, it came out really good and we all liked it and um, we all, they all worked so hard, so 
Thank you for everyone, and thank you to these lovely women for giving us that opportunity. Do you want to talk? It was interesting because we were trying to make Corey sound more of a teenager, so try to incorporate a little bit of slang where it doesn't sound forced like yo, like that. <laughs> so yeah, that was part, only the hard part. It was mostly easy. Yeah, for me, I think I struggled with the creation of the scripts because I grew up in the in the era where we we learn with textbooks. So I was expecting them to give us textbook, and then we look into it, and then we we fake it. But we didn't get anything like that. So when we were grouped, that we were supposed to create this script for this person, even for the fish, I I got confused. But eventually, it came out good, and I'm proud of it. So the, the process was totally chaotic. Um, but what we, what we attempted to do, and I think we did to some extent, was we built our characters and sorted out the message, and then talked about what sort of things could happen and we um, introduced a little animation um, tool and had people write little, you, you each went off and wrote little scripts and uh, little animations for just different points, anything that sort of had come to their mind for after the discussion. And then some of those pieces um, we pulled into creating a story and so we set the sort of general scene, so this scene has to do this, this has to achieve this, this has to achieve this, and then wove those, some of those animations and then those discussions together. And then we, each of those sections, we then had a Saturday um, mixed writing session where we broke into smaller groups and we started to build script um, for each of the scenes. And then we looked at continuity and tried to weave things through. And there was a fantastic scene with Cory not being very happy and going hiding in the pantry. And, and it was excellent, but it was just like what I said before, it was just way too long. So we had to cut some things out. So um, yeah, so we were working on two levels when we were scripting. We were doing the story arc for Cory as an individual and then we were trying to hit the points of the scientific communication or the the sort of the struggle but it had to be Corey's story throughout in order to carry it through so yep and one thing too you might be going it's an animation and yet it's um, sort of like a graphic novel and that was because of budget mm -hmm. it costs so much money to make a true full-on animation, and so um, we hired um, animators, two animators, it was called Pulp Studios, they're based here in Edmonton, and, um, you know, we kind of said, we don't have, you know, we've got a good, good amount of money, but, you know, this isn't Pixar, so we really had to th think creatively around that. And um, hats off uh, to both uh, Corey and Kelly at um, Pulp Studios because uh, uh, Corey especially, he's uh, the graphic artist who pulled in a lot of the character of, of developing Corey. And we would say, how about this and how about that? And we'd have like, uh, there was a lot of collaborative digital tools that we used to gather up. In, you know, Agnes was very helpful in making sure that students from Sakunya and same with Frank with uh, students from the Vista Virtual and they've gone on to high, you know on to university his students so they were hard, to, hard much harder to um, get a video from so that's why their voice isn't really as much part of, as part of this but um, so we did a lot of collaborative digital tools a variety of those and uh, just constantly trying to tweak and build the characters within the, there was, there's a lot of limitations and um, limitations 
um, make you become creative. So it was always kind of, how are we going to solve th this next part of the, pr of the project? And so that mixed kind of animation, um, uh, graphic novel style, I guess, you know, it, there it is. It's kind of what we had to do mostly because of budget. But I think for the purposes of the animation, it, it's effective. So that's why that, cho in case that occurred to you, it's like, that's, that's not quite what that usually is. But that's why, yeah. Okay, well, we're available for any questions. And of course, if you'd like to come up and meet uh, you know, um, Agnes and, her, and the different uh, youth that are on the stage with us, um, please do. Uh, we're welcome to hear more questions from you anytime for the rest of the conference. And um, we just appreciate you three beautiful young women coming here today and being part of this. And I know that Miriam said she was coming, and so you two are bonuses, so I think that's great, yeah. So um, thank you so much, and uh, yeah, have a lovely rest of your day. Um, I think that we're at the very end, so I know everyone's kind of tired and ready to just relax, have a cup of tea or whatever you want to do there. So we'll see you tomorrow.